So it's unfortunate. It looks like our finals are going to be relatively uninteresting, but we'll see. I'm still hyped for this too, the uh, Australia finals. The Australia tournament. Oh, instant counter with the Kumidori. It's a good start for the Luchi player. We got our Bluenos online. I wonder which version of Luchi this is. Five at lead here. Take it. Oh, we got a trigger potentially. This looks like a Digimon player. Oh, it's just a brulee. That's not as scary. Mono Red Finals. Oh, we got an Airdor, Kaku. Wait, what? Hello? Can you activate the ability first? And not just cheat? Just be like, kill that thing? You need to actually do the Airdor stuff. Put an Airdor and a Blueno at the bottom. Okay. He hit pretty good there. All right, seven at lead here. Leave it at top. Opponent takes. Down what? Uh, what do you mean down, Buddha? All right, we got a cracker here, which is a pretty good play too. I mean, that was a really insane air door for sure. I don't know, dude, man. Fucking playing the air door lottery is so risky. Six at lead. He just blocks. Okay. Six at lead block. Got it. And then five at lead counter with the Shirahoshi. Got it. Oh my god. Sakazuki shoot the cracker. Brutal. Eight at the Kaku, it looks like. Going to peek out of life and leave it there. Kaku's dead. Still, the curve for the black player here has been gross. We got Airdor into Kaku, which hit... The CP9 cards needed to activate the Kaku. Then we had Sakazuki on six. Katakuri is definitely a lot weaker going first. That's for sure. Makes your crackers less scary. Makes your big moms less scary. He's got the Daifuku, though, so at least all the good players know that Daifuku is good. Ooh, seven at lead right away. Jamming in. Shirahoshi. All right, well, he's he's a, he's a good player. He plays Daifuku, but also not the best player because he plays Shirahoshi. So he discarded. Looks like eight drop and a ten drop there. Oh, no, dude. Get fucked, dude. People just don't play around Isho in paper, dude. What's going on? No, dude. Oh. Oh, God. That's so bad. And he get, takes the Katakuri, too. So now 8-drop Katakuri can't hit the Isho right back. Oh, no, dude. This game seems over. It's Jover. Damn, the curve from this Luchi player was nuts. Now you have to try and make some headway here. So this is nine at the Sakazuki, peeking at our own life. The black player's gotta defend here somehow. But at least you're living happy that there's no a drop category coming down. Still, a drop category would even just put him back to five life, which is pretty crazy. That was a Tsuru plus what? Tsuru plus. Looks like a Fukuro. Hard to see there, but it was a three drop. Either Fukuro or a Kobe. Whoa! 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
11 had Sakazuki draw a card. Damn. He's not messing around. Okay, now we've got an Isho in play. Damn, the camera on the bottom right for them is going crazy. It's going wild. Flickering in and out. They're phasing in and out of existence. Just seven at the Daifuku? That's interesting. What are we going to put into play this turn here then? I mean, the fact that he, the black player is at four life and the yellow player is at three is already a huge upside. That's nine at lead there or 8k. Borsellino and... Borsellino and pass with four up. Does he really have double shockwave here? Or I guess he's just bluffing. Okay, so we want to string together 10 drops here. He has at least one, it looks like. Five at lead, block. 10 drop, go to three. Opponent goes to three. Leaving four Don up there seems like a lot. Now you have to find a way to close out here before the second and the third 10 drop big mom kill you. This is where you'd really want like Rush Lucci or something like that. Something to get this game over with. We need to get this game over. Is this an attack from Borsellino incoming or leader, I wonder? He's really flicking his cards around, not sure. Nine at leader, okay. Could at any point in time also now play Kaku to uh, restand our leader. It's just expensive in terms of cards in hand. Two K, two K, and a one K. Wow, we're countering out of the swing for nine. Aggressive. And then here's another swing for nine or eight. What do we got here in trigger? He's thinking about it at least. Oh, wait, what was that? Did he counter out of it, or what happened there? Oh, no, it was Smoothie. Discard a card, and then we're Sakazuki-ing the Smoothie. Opponent is still at a relatively... Opponent's still at two. This is scary here, because Tendrop Big Mom could potentially... No, Tendrop Big Mom can't kill the Isho, because we can back it up with the Borsellino. Still, though... He's going to go to three life here. This seems like a block. Yup, block. So we keep our Isho alive here. Now, opponent definitely has another 10-drop Big Mom. They're just not sure whether to play it here or not. Maybe you try and wait one more turn to play it, but that's scary too. You might be going to zero. Five at lead here seems good. See a Khalifa and something else. Oh, is this an air door trigger here? Getting back at Tashigi with Airdor. 
Ugh. Now, can the opponent... Ugh, God, the Luchi player has to find a way to kill here. That's the problem. If you can't kill this turn, it almost feels doomed. And how do you kill when the opponent's at three life? Double Big Mom is so hard to beat. Especially when he didn't really have an aggressive start. I mean, he had a relatively aggressive start, it felt like. Now we're attacking with the Shigi for seven. Because what? We need all of these hits to hit here. Seven, nine, twelve. Oh, man. This is so tough. Yeah, again, that's a big if, though, right? You know, if they have no 2Ks, they could definitely die here. But if they do, they could live. Oh, he's still thinking about these attacks, though, which I don't like. This is a really long think. You should really... Uh... I, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's a really tough turn. You have to decide to try and win or not. But opponent looks like he has at least two cards with counter in hand. I see a pudding. What looked like a Sanji, but it's tough. Alright, we're going eight with Sakazuki. Go to one. And then we could go nine and then eleven. Okay, this is good sequencing. These are good numbers. We went seven. They didn't counter out of it. So we assume that they can't get out of seven. They got one card, so then we go eight. They have to take the eight. And then we go nine, right? Oh, they have to take the nine. And then we go 11 here. Is this 11 or 10? Very tough number to get over. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Ooh, wow. He was 1K short to get out of every attack the Luchi player made. Wow, dude, that's so close. Oh, what a fingernail of a game. If the if he didn't have Paro Sparrow, if the Paro Sparrow was a counter card, he would have lived and won. Wow. Really close. But really good sequencing too at the end there. Because I wasn't sure how to do it at first. Because the 7 with the Shigi is obvious. But then after that, I was like, do you have to go 7, 9, 10 or whatever? But no, he actually went up the line really well. He went 7, and then 8, and then 9, and then 11. Really good numbers. Really good sequencing to end the game here. 7 into 8. Opponent has a 2k, a 1k, and a Paro Sparrow in hand here. Pretty sure. Or he needed to hit one more 2k out of his life. Yup. This is 1k. Now we attack for 9, and he has exactly 9k to defend here. And then 11 for lethal, man. That was really good. That was good stuff. Really good draw by the uh, Luchi player, but also well played. I mean, the, the Katakuri player fucked up big time by letting himself get Eshowed. Getting hit by the he Esho there is just like... Unacceptable, it feels like.